What's the word, y'all? This is my favorite time of the season. Though the NBA Finals are going on, and it's been cool, y'all know off-season, trades, rumors, all of that stuff is what I really enjoy the most. And today I woke up to a report that Damian Lillard might be requesting a trade over the next couple days. And I say might be because at the end of the day, these are all just rumors. And our job, as people that love the NBA, is to overreact to some of these rumors. So today is that day. I forget exactly where I was at. I was talking about Zach Levine being a part of Team USA and how exciting it was for the Chicago Bulls fans because, well, that's a big accomplishment. Even though they haven't looked necessarily amazing, it's a big accomplishment for one of our guys to be a part of the Olympic team. But the one thing I said was, like, Zach Levine has to go there and not be the recruited. And Damian Lillard might have went to Team USA and became the recruited and came to the realization that maybe Portland ain't the place. Now, again, these are all completely rumors. This could be completely cap. It don't, I just, I just want to talk about potential Damian Lillard places because, as we know, the Portland Trail Blazers have been a good team for multiple, multiple years. Even got a conference finals appearance under their belt. But it seems like this team had maxed out, right? Um, with Dame and CJ in the backcourt for their entire existence as a team, people have wondered how successful can a team be with two small guards? Oh my God, Kenny said they small guards. I, man, people were mad at me because I called them small guards, even though Damian Lillard is big for his position as a point guard. We're still talking about two small guards in the grand scheme of guards. Just having two guards that are six or small, it really hurts the defense at the end of the day. Um, and, and that's what exactly what we saw, especially when you're going against teams that Teams are getting bigger nowadays. You know what I'm saying? Luka Doncic being a point guard is huge. The only team that I'm looking at the standings in the Western Conference right now, the only team that has like two small guards that were successful were the Utah Jazz. You know, they end up being the one seed with Donovan Mitchell and Mike Conley. But they also had the Defensive Player of the Year, whether you like it or not. You know what I'm saying? They were able to anchor their defense with the Defensive Player of the Year. And the Portland Trail Blazers never had that high caliber defensive player alongside those dudes. They tried it, right? Robert Covington is a guy that's got the uh, all defensive votes in his career Yusuf Nurkic wasn't a bad defender then he snapped his leg and came back it wasn't the same so the Portland Trailblazers as an organization I would say has tried to put together a competent and a championship quality team around around Damian Lillard but they haven't been successful and now it seems like the tree is barren right Damian Lillard is a guy we can look at at this point and even if he requests a trade tomorrow, we can't be upset with him because he has been the definition of loyal to where it started. And you can admire that. And yeah, the Portland Trail Blazers could make some retoolings that don't deal with getting rid of Damian Lillard, whether that's CJ McCollum's trade, the Yusuf Nurkic's trade, yada, yada, yada. And I don't think there's any other trade out there that can make them a championship contender alongside Damian Lillard. So the writing is on the wall for the Portland Trail Blazers. Again, we are, we are talking about rumors, so they might not trade Damian Lillard. They might come back next season and be completely the same. I don't know. I've always been the guy on the show that said there is value in being a good team. You know, maybe the Portland Trail Blazers don't trade Damian Lillard and they're never a championship team. There's still value in just being good. You know, if Damian Lillard retires his whole career with the Portland Trailblazers and never won a championship, I think we still look at those years and say, like, yeah, they didn't get the ring, but there were the good years in there, and that could be the conference finals appearance, this and that. But now we said that, let's talk about some potential trades because that's what we're here for. Damian Lillard's going to be the biggest name potentially on the market uh, because the free agency class is not as great. You know, you got Kawhi Leonard, but with him having that, that injury and that surgery, I would assume that he's coming back to the Clippers and getting healthy on their dime, and not, you know what I'm saying, and not switching teams. Um, so it really is Damian Lillard via trade that can really determine next year's champion because that's how nice of a player Damian Lillard is. So I went onto Twitter and I asked people to send me Damian Lillard trades. Um, and you know what? I looked through a few of them. Not great. <laughs> Everybody on Twitter, including me, can't be general managers. You know, it's it's tough being a general manager. Because you have to convince yourself that both teams get what they want, even if they don't. So let's take a look at some of the trades that people sent to me. This was from Tyler. He said, maybe some more picks or something. IDK, just do this together in like 10 seconds. Also like Max Kellerman's trade idea. I don't know what Max Kellerman's been talking about. Somebody would have to send me that. But let's talk about the Nuggets potential deal. Now, this is something... 
that I saw or heard on on Zach Lowe's podcast. This was maybe three or four weeks ago when they were potentially talking about Damian Lillard trades. And here's the argument for it, and then the argument against it. That's the way I'm kind of I'm gonna play these things. The argument for and the argument against, and you decide what you believe is the best potential trade package for Damian Lillard. Right? The argument for, right? The Portland Trailblazers get a player like Jamal Murray, who all, we all know is really good and has all-star potential. But Jamal Murray probably won't play lap next season because he tore his ACL. So what does that allow the Portland Trailblazers to do next season? Be terrible. Be ass. They get to be really, really bad, get a top five pick, and then you pair that top five pick next season. The year after that, with Jamal Murray, you allow Bo Bo to potentially spread his wings because once upon a time, Bo Bo is supposed to be the next coming of I don't know who. And I would guess, I mean, you couldn't throw 2021 and 2022 and 2022 in there. Um, but I would guess you would want, if you're the Portland Trailblazers, more picks than just two at any in any Damian Lillard trade, unless you're getting back an all-star caliber player, and in this trade, you're not doing that. That's the argument for it for the Trailblazers. We can suck next season, top five pick, and then we have Jamal Murray top five pick and whatever else we get for if we try to trade CJ or we trade Yusuf Nurkic. The argument against it is, okay, now what? Next year's draft class might not be as amazing as this year's draft class. You're throwing me your first round pick this year, and that ain't value because you were one of the best teams in the league. If we're going to bottom out, I think we might want a top pick this year considering how stacked this, this draft class could really be. And as I'm recording this video, ladies and gentlemen, I just got an update that says Damian Lillard tells Yahoo where he currently stands with Portland. He's scheduled to talk to the media later today. Well, that throws a wrench in my video because <laughs> maybe in two hours he goes to the podium and say, I'm here to stay forever. Or... He could say, yeah, I'm requesting a trade publicly. If he were publicly publicly requested a trade, like in front of media on TV, like not on TV, I guess, but in front of media, that would be crazy. Because typically if somebody's requesting a trade, they just go into the offices of, the, of their general manager say, get me out of here. Not with microphones and stuff. It, it should be interesting. I'm very excited to see what he says in that press conference. This one comes from Jordan. It is Damian Lillard for Ben Simmons, Matisse Stiebel, Tyrese Maxey, and four first round picks. That is a plethora of picks. That is a 24-year-old Ben Simmons, a 25-year-old Ben Simmons. That is Matisse Thibault, who is one of the most destructive defenders in the league already. And that is Tyrese Maxey, who showed as a rookie that he he's probably going to be pretty good. Um, and this is what he said. I think this is good for both teams. And B gets a perimeter go-to player. And the Trailblazers get to see if ben, ben Simmons can get a team built around here. Draft capital, yada, yada, yada. Um, this feels, and call me crazy, this feels like this might be just a tad bit much when you consider... Three young players and then four first round picks. But maybe that's the going price. Maybe it is. You're not trading. This is this is what makes this trade or the Damian Lillard trade thing different than other star players that have been traded. Damian Lillard is under contract for a very, very long time. He just is. It's not like the trade for a guy that's under a one plus one like Anthony Davis. It this is a hey, whoever trades for Dame has him for the next four seasons. So let's pay like we have him for four seasons. And when you think about it like that, maybe it's not as bad to throw in everything. Because Joel Embiid and Damian Lillard is good enough to win the Eastern Conference. I'm just saying it. It's good, uh, healthy, obviously. I don't know why I got to throw that caveat in there, but people be taking things so literal. Healthy Damian Lillard and Joel Embiid should be good enough to win a conference. Now, Daryl Morey has never been a, p a person that is afraid to trade away all his picks. Remember, he tried to throw four first-round picks at the Minnesota Timberwolves to get um, um, Jimmy Butler into Houston. Him giving away four first-round picks, that's possible. It definitely, definitely is possible. But when you're paying four first-round picks with Ben Simmons, Matisse Thibault, and Maxi, might be a tad bit too much. If I'm the Trailblazers and this offers come to me and Damian Lillard tells me he wants out, I accept immediately because we have an all-star, all-defensive defensive player of the year player who's under contract for four seasons. We have another great defensive player who might be all-defensive team again. We, we get another young player and then a ton of, ton of picks and we can buy them out a little bit. Now, this one comes from Biff. Biff gave us three different trade offers, and we're going to see. Y'all let me know which one y'all like the most. The Warriors package is so intriguing. It's so intriguing. I Honestly, I would want both of the first-round picks for this season. The Warriors, you don't get to keep both of them if I'm giving you Damian Lillard, right? 
I think that the Blazers might be a team that's like, ah, we might want to trade him away to an Eastern Conference team so he don't get to kill us four times a year so our fans can be reminded what we gave up. You know what I'm saying? I think you trade him to an Eastern Conference team. But the Warriors having Wiseman, Wiggins, seven, what is it, seven, and what else? I want seven and 14 and a pick next season, if that's possible, or the year after that. That's such an intriguing package. Because though James Wiseman didn't look amazing in his rookie season, you have to remember the man barely played in college and even barely played in high school. He <laughs> he don't have that many games under his belt and he still looked pretty solid. You give him to a place as Portland where he can really develop. You bring in Wiggins as really just a contract filler. He'll be off the books in a few years. And then you get the picks. 7-14. I might actually 7-14 and a couple more. Legitimately. Why do the Warriors want Damian Lillard? Just get more talent. I don't know how they start. Do they start Dame? Oh, my God. The, the, defensively, that team might be bad. Dame, Steph Curry, Clay, Draymond, and whoever. Sounds amazing. Offensive. They might score 120 points per game. The, the, the Warriors trade package is very intriguing. But, again, they may not want to trade him to the Warriors because he will dominate. they will dominate the conference for the next couple of years. This Heat trade don't seem very realistic to me, um, that, especially considering the Heat don't really have that many picks. They'd have to go so far into the future, and I don't know if that's even legal, so I'll skip that one. But the Blazers one is interesting because one of the things I said on our podcast when we were talking about potential Dame trades, if I have to trade Dame, I want a player that I know is an all-star caliber player already. I'm talking the likes of Jalen Brown. I'm talking the likes of Brandon Ingram. Brandon Ingram, Nikhil Alexander-Walker, and two first-round picks is an okay package to get back. You get a player who's been an all-star. He even had a good season last year. He wasn't an all-star, but he had a good season last year. Nikhil Alexander-Walker has amazing potential and two first-round picks. I might even ask for three. Because, in this case, I know you don't really have a ton of leverage because Dane might walk in and say he wants to be traded. But the, the Pelicans need to do something. They might be willing to give you three first-round picks, especially when you consider that they have a bunch of first-round picks from the Lakers deal. So you might be able to get more than just two first-round picks in this trade. You get an all-star, and now the Portland Trail Blazers have um, a Brandon Ingram. And this could be more of a retooling than a bottoming out because Brandon Ingram, if you still keep CJ and you still keep Yusuf Nurkic, who already said that he might want to be traded if Dave gets traded, whatever, you're still an okay team. You're not a bottom five team anymore. You know what I'm saying? You're still an okay team. But for the Pels to have Dame and Zion... You should be a playoff team. I'm even seeing more trades. And this is from the Golden State Warrior subreddit. This is the best possible package the Warriors can put together for Damian Lillard or another star. Wiggs, Wiseman, Poole, 714. They can also trade their 2022 a pick swap, a pick swap, a whole first, a whole first, and a pick swap. <laughs> hey, if this is the offer I'm getting for the Trailblaze, I'm sorry. I have to say yes. Do you see this? Do you see this? Yeah, I'm going to have to say yes to that, bro. Will Damian Lillard be traded? We don't know. It's fun to talk about, though. Let me know what you think is the best potential package. That comment section is open. Even if you agree or disagree with stuff I said in this video, hopefully you did enjoy it. And I'll see y'all soon. Hopefully we get more rumors. Maybe we film another video after Damian Lillard does whatever he's going to do.